In this series, we are going to be starting from absolutely nothing and trying to acquire all the riches that Los Santos has to offer. Welcome to Broke to Ballin'. This series is called Broke to Ballin' and we're on episode 52 and I only have about a thousand dollars in my bank account. So in today's episode, I am going to be seeing how much money I can make in 10 hours. As you'll see on the screen right now, there is a 10 hour countdown that I have there ready to time me to make sure I'm not doing any cheaty funny business throughout this video. Uh, of course, I could also just pause the timer and still cheat, but I'm not going to do that because I'm a real YouTuber. Trust me, guys, I am. But in this 10 hours, I have roughly planned out a list of things that I'm going to do to make as much money as possible. I'm hoping I can end up with at least 10 million, but honestly, I'm not really sure. This is kind of the first time me trying to do this properly. And it's also the first time me trying to make this much money without any good, like, double money or discounts or anything. This week is garbage. From what I'm aware of, the only double money is a random game mode and the wall safe in the salvage yard, which is... Um, just plain awful. But like I said, I have a list of things I want to do. And first of all, we're going to start off by going to the nightclub and I will start the 10 hour timer as soon as I make that first bit of money or sorry, as soon as I start the rough plan I have going on. So we'll see that in a second. Now, some of you also might be wondering why I only have a thousand dollars in my bank account. If you watched last episode, I ended up with just over two million. So, um, where did that money go? Well, it has a little bit of something to do with me buying a second Kasatka. I'm sure some of you probably realize what this means, but I'll get into it a bit later in the video. So here we are in my nightclub. Popularity zero. It's a very shit place. No one wants to be here, but we're going to change that. So I'm going to go ahead and start the timer now and then get into my method and throughout this video however long it is i'm going to bring you along on the journey of me making as much money as i can in 10 hours and hopefully i don't lose my mind too much throughout this video but without further ado let's start so the first thing i want to go ahead and do is get this nightclub popularity back up to full because the nightclub safe is actually a really good way to make money i just never use it because i'm lazy but that changes today so what i'm going to go ahead and do is go to my resident dj and while i was going to book a new one but we don't actually have money I didn't think about this too much, did I? Well, this is already a tragic start to the video. Let me go ahead and do a time trial so I have enough money to stock this up. Oh boy, would not be a Lankman Dan video without it being a complete mess from minute one. Now, of course, I'm trying to be as efficient as possible, so I really hope I can get this first try. Although, as I am usually with these RC time trials, I'm not too confident. I can't even see my car. That is fantastic. Why did I park so close to it? God damn it. And not off to a great start. I got an unlucky bounce. That is... Thank you, Rockstar. I think the main tip I'd give to people struggling with these RC car races is never hold down the acceleration fully unless you have a really long straight bit to like go on. I kind of just half tap it a lot to make sure I can control my handling a lot better because the main difficulty about this car or RC car, I should say, is it's very difficult to handle at times. So you kind of got to just really tap it, treat it nicely and hopefully it will treat you nicely back. But it looks like we're going to be good. Oh, well, I hope we're going to be good. Yeah, cut it a bit close, but we're fine. Now, where is the next one? Regular time trial here. There's also a G's cache, which I'm going to try and get. I won't spend too much time on it because sometimes I waste a lot of time. I'm pretty sure I had a video quite a while ago where I cut it out. I was going to do it at the very end of the video, but I was looking for about 25 minutes and I didn't want to embarrass myself. So I just cut it out of the video because my ego was very fragile and I didn't want that to be a thing. G's cache, can we find it quickly, please? Please, please find it quick, 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 quickly, please. So I'm going to give it just a quick check over all the main areas. It's in there. Perfect. Okay. Luckily, that didn't take too long. And then after that, we can go ahead and do the time trial. What I'll also do quickly is make sure to get my vehicle gone. And now I have the cops on me. Fantastic. Going to call Lester for that. I didn't even get my vehicle to go away. God damn it. Uh, Lester, please get the cops off me. I am not really in the mood for that today. Uh, remove water level. Perfect. And this time trial is actually... From what I remember, one of the more difficult ones. Luckily, this bike makes all time trials pretty darn easy, but I'm still a bit stressed. So uh, here we go. Now, I don't actually remember if I've done this time trial on video before. I was actually making another video. I think it was like six months or so or something I go now, where I was making a video trying to complete every single time trial, but I would spin a wheel to randomize what vehicle I could use. And very quickly, I realized that there's a lot of vehicles in the game that are simply just not fast enough to complete time trials. So I got like three in and then I just couldn't complete it again. Uh, I still would like to do that video in some way, but I'd have to figure out some sort of rule set to make it 
still difficult but fail because you get to one of the time trials and it asks you to use like a random tow truck or something and it's not really going to go well. Your thing with a bike as fast as this I'd have a much bigger gap between the end time and my final time but seemingly not. And there we go just made it $102,000. Now, where is the HSW time trial? Come on, show up on the map, please. Stop wasting my time. Oh, perfect. It's right next to us. Uh, I'm going to leave the bike time trial. I feel like going up to Mount Chiliad for $50,000 isn't really worth my time. So I'm going to do this one and then go back to the nightclub and do what I was meant to do at the start of the video. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Alrighty, here we go. HSW Sandy Shores. The finish line is down here under the bridge. So in my opinion, this is another one of those time trials where you don't really want to follow the GPS. It tells you to turn there. In my opinion, if you keep going, it makes it much easier because you need to get over to the other side of the canal anyways over here. So if you just keep going this way, once again, try not to hit any cars or let any cars hit you. That was close. Turn over here, which isn't even really much of a turn. It's kind of just more of a lean. And then you're here at the finish with pretty much 20 seconds to spare. So a pretty easy time trial and $252,000 in the bank. Now, I could simply teleport to the nightclub. Is it faster just driving there? It might be. I'm just going to drive there. Simply log into the nightclub and if your popularity is at zero, simply book a new DJ. I'm going to go with Dixon and unfortunately when you book a new one, you do it. You have to go collect them, but this should restock my nightclub to 100% and our DJ should be right here. I'm hoping. Let's hope there's no funny business. Well, Dave's here, so there's going to be some funny business, but... And like I expected, of course, there's some funny business. Someone has stolen the DJ money. Or DJ equipment. That's what I meant. But with the bag back, we can get our DJ and hopefully get the nightclub to full popularity. That is what I'm led to believe. I have not done this in a long time and I don't completely remember, but we should be fine. Perfection. Popularity is at full. That is exactly what I like to see. So that will now get us, I think, $50,000 an hour. It might be more, something around that. And then at the end, when it's stocked up to 250 k we can go ahead and collect it for a bit of that passive income. And of course, on top of that, we have the actual nightclub making money as well. Uh, but like I said, I want to go ahead and get my oppressor now, so quickly call back the mechanic get that then we're heading over to the acid lab so acid lab right here please let me in for some reason i have issues with getting in sometimes again are you fucking kidding me bro the door is not blocked whatsoever let me in the <laughs> for some reason this acid lab is very glitchy i don't know why does this happen to anyone else or is it just me and it is already full i did not actually know that i thought it wasn't well if it wasn't full i was going to go ahead and get my supplies i'm going to do that anyways of course and then simply speed up the supplies over here but i'm going to go ahead and sell them as well now now the best way to do this is to do it in a public session you do get bonus money for it but to be honest guys i am very scared of people so i'm not going to do that but I would recommend doing it yourself if you want to make a bit more money. It is just a little bit more risky. But for me, I can't be bothered with the risk. I'm just going to go ahead and set it like this. That kind of rhymed. Now, hopefully this is a quick one and it's definitely not the longest. So we'll take it. Um, game, please. Thank you. No, not the phone. The acid. Thank you. God. So I really hope GTA 6 fixes like the jankiness of this game. Sometimes it's really, really strange with like the certain position your character needs to be in to do an action or something. It's quite annoying. So we should get our money in just a couple of seconds here and then we can move on to the next business I need to set up before doing, of course, Kaya Perico. I don't know what else you expected. It's a money making video. We're going to be doing Kaya Perico. So preferences going to quickly switch to the salvage yard because the salvage yard this week has triple money on the safe which isn't really that good but we might as well make use of it in some way as you can see our current safe has 600 dollars in it which is kind of pathetic but hopefully that number goes up a little bit soon and to get that number up if you want to whale if you haven't really used the salvage yard that much you need to tow vehicles so with towing vehicles you get vehicles and salvage their parts as one form of income but on top of that you also are able to get the safe income to be increased it's kind of works like the popularity meter from the nightclub just there isn't an actual meter there so it's kind of difficult to know if if you're making money but it does kind of work like that i'm also starting to really regret the choice of salvage yard i did it in that area because it was like the area they showed off in the promotion trailers and videos and i was like let's make it like feel real but it's a really annoying place like just getting in and out of it itself is bad and then location wise it's not the best i probably should have picked the one in i think strawberry near my auto shop i might change it in the future i don't know but the plan with the salvage yard is to do two of these and then once we finish this we're going to be doing an ammunition sale mission from our bunker or at least that's the plan I'm going to do. I would usually fill the space with a pay for and hitch, but because the new update, they're not that good anymore. So I think that might be the next best thing, but we'll see. We'll see. Here is the Primo. 
There we go, get hooked up lad. And there's delivery one complete. And we're just gonna do that same thing one more time and then we'll be good for the salvage yard. And delivery number two. So now both those cars are gonna start getting salvaged for parts and the wall safe will keep going up. And we're currently sitting at about $626,000 from the 1,000 we started with. So not a terrible start. Now I did say I was gonna go ahead and do a bunker sale mission, although I am thinking it might take too much time to go over there and do it. Like I don't know if it's worth it and I don't have the fast travel to the bunker unlocked. So instead, we're just gonna go ahead and do Kaya already because I'm lazy. All right, come on up here and start up Kaya Perico. Annoyingly, the $100,000 setup cost is, you know, annoying. And now we wanna head over to Grape Seed. So simply get our submarine as close to there as possible, which isn't that close because Grape Seed is an inland sea, but we move literally like we're moving our submarine. Get it? It's a joke. Laugh. So as usual, you're gonna want to blow up the guys near your plane once they come into view. Try not to actually blow up the plane. I've done that once before and it's uh, quite embarrassing to be completely honest with you. Steal the vellum and we're off to the island of Cayo Perico. Yes, I said it weird because I felt like it. And here we are at Cayo Perico. Now for most of you watching, you probably know how to do this and you've probably seen me do it a bunch of times before. But for those of you watching, for this first Kaya run of the video, I'm gonna give you a rough rundown of how I do it. So first of all, I steal this bike by the edge of the runway, come over to this hangar and scout out the different secondary loot spots. So first of all, I go up on this ladder on the side and in here you should find some stuff. Sadly, there's not much there for me today. Seems like we just have a little bit of the Mary J, which isn't terrible. It's the second best salute, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then we simply jump over this fence, come down here, and there is also not much. There's just cash. That's kind of depressing, to be completely honest with you. Usually you want a bit more here because that is not enough to actually fill up our bags. So when this does happen to you and you don't get good enough loot in this hangar, you need to come over to this other one that I will show you. So get back on your bike and drive over here. So you want to come into this area, turn to the right very quickly, and this is another spot for loot. And I'll also show you how to get here in the mission without getting spotted. But you come in here and it's also only cash, which is pretty darn garbage. This is a really bad run. I better get like a pink diamond or something to make up for it, my god. But take pictures of both. I don't know if you actually have to take pictures of both to make sure that you get the loot, but I do it anyways, just in case. Uh, but then simply get back on your bike and now we're going to make our way over to the radio tower, which is located over here. Now there's many ways you can get to the radio tower, but I'm going to show you my method, which is a little bit risky, but should be pretty easy once you get used to it. So simply come up here so you don't get spotted by any of the cameras. Try not to hit a tree or rocks, especially in nighttime, they are very difficult to see and can be very, very annoying. But just take it slow and you should be fine. Come over this way. Make sure to watch out for that sniper in the tower on the left because he can see you sometimes. Jump through here onto the other side and these trees will hit you so don't go near them. And what you want to do is jump up on these rocks to get over. I wouldn't recommend going full speed because it can mess you up. Try and hit about there and then you are over and you should be good from here on out. Just again, try not to fall into the water because you will lose your bike and you will scream and cry like I've done many times before. But once you're through there, just be very careful not to get spotted once again. As long as you stay over here, it's pretty easy. Then you can come over here, go up this hill. Once again, wait for this guard at the top to turn around. Then you can drive right behind him. He won't see you because he is apparently deaf. Never mind, I'm a fucking idiot. How the hell did he hear me? That's never happened to me before. Wow, that is really, really shocking. That has genuinely never happened to me before. Okay, so don't follow me. Be a bit more cautious around the guards. Apparently their hearing has improved since the last time I did this. Uh, so now I have to find another bike. So if you do mess up and get taken back, there is a bike up here you can grab. God, I feel like such a failure in life. Okay, we're back to where we were last time and I'm gonna be much more careful now because the guard seems to have very good hearing now for some reason. It's fine, I won't be angry. I'll just continue on with the video because I need to be an informative, instructive person. There we go, guard is gone. And now we can continue on to the radio tower. So come down here, go up this mountain and we should be right at the tower. Yay. So a very good tip, if you didn't know, is that if there is a guard on the ground level, you can see him there on the minimap. That means that the box is not on the ground level. If there's no guard, it means it is. So just a quick little tip there, if you didn't know that. And of course, the signal box is right at the top, wasting me even more time. Fantastic. But here we go, signal box, open that bad boy up and do some basic math. Our favorite part of playing video games, mathematics. So we're gonna do one times 10, six times uh, probably eight times zero, I'd imagine. Maybe. Yes. Yep, that's the right one. I know how to do math. There we go. I thought a target was 30, not 32. God damn it, that's my bad. No, that's also wrong. What am I doing? Eight times 10. 
four times zero and six times zero, or one, I guess, not zero. Zero would make it zero. That was also a bit embarrassing, but there we go. Basic math done. Then you're gonna want to go to your phone, down to Sightseer, and look for the loot. Tap to the right, I think three times, and you'll be at the basement where the loot is. Now, I'm gonna really hope for the pink diamond here because I feel like I've been screwed over otherwise. And to note, we got the safety bonds or whatever the hell they are. Great, what a, what a fantastic reward to get. You can also go to not the basement storage, but the office cams to look for paintings. Paintings are useful to have if your loot is bad elsewhere. And we have no paintings there as well as no paintings. Oh, we have a painting, lovely. That's very nice to see. And then once you're done with that, it's very easy easy just to go ahead and do what all of us want to do. I'm joking. Mental health is a really bad thing. Mental health is a bad thing? I mean, mental health is an important thing. Don't listen to me. I'm not a qualified therapist. And then we're back to Los Santos. Easy as that, right guys? Easy as that. And then what I like to do is instantly go ahead and change my spawn location to the Kasatka, which I think I've done already, yes, and then switch to a new session so you can teleport right back into it. And now it's time for everybody's favorite part of Heist in GTA 5, and that is the setup missions. Don't you just love those tasty little setup missions? So gather intel is gonna be the first one we go ahead and do, except now our submarine will always spawn around the airport if you've teleported from the airport. Hold up, I pressed gather intel, that's the wrong thing. Don't do that. I pressed the wrong button there. So yeah, if you accidentally click something wrong, you can just reload the session and it will restart over again. So what I actually meant to do was go ahead and go into this, go over to prep and then do approach vehicles. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the long fin. I used to be a big fan of the Kasatka, but honestly it takes a lot longer. So the long fin is the way to go. Now there will be three police stations that you get the options for when you do this mission. I've currently gotten this Vinewood police station. Now with each corresponding police station, there are certain areas where trucks will spawn so you can drag the boat along. There are gonna be two locations that have regular trucks and one location that has the Phantom Wedge, which is the truck with the big like triangle on the front of it that's much faster. You always want to go ahead and get the Phantom Wedge because it is just a lot, lot quicker. So I'm trying to do this from memory. I believe when you get this police station over here, the Phantom Wedge is down here. When you get this one, I think it's somewhere else. I know there's a spawn location around this area and I believe there is one more location also down south somewhere, although I honestly can't remember. So if you don't know where to go, go to the police station first and then Pavel will contact you with the truck's locations. So there we go, Pavel has taught us where to go and our truck is going to be this one, which is the one of the locations I thought. Now these guys can be a little bit tough sometimes, so I recommend getting to some high ground or some cover and then you should be able to take them out pretty easily. Always take out the guy on the minigun first because he's a bit of a problem and then everyone else you can just shoot down. Is he dead? You dead buddy? Are you f- What? I'm so confused. What did I even hit there? Great, now the truck's broken. Why is everything going wrong again? Fuck this game, man! Okay, so if that happens and the truck explodes and you also want to end your life just like I do right now, like I said before, simply restart the session and do it again. For fuck's sake, what did I even hit? <laughs> Why? This is meant to be a time deficient challenge and already I've messed up twice very massively. God damn it. Again, if you're really using these videos for guides, I don't know what to tell you. This is more of a realistic experience of a GTA Online player instead of a really efficient good guide, but it's a bit more entertaining if you want to take that into account. At least I think it's entertaining. Well, attempt number two, the truck isn't on fire this time, so we're off to a good start. So here we are at the police station and we gotta be careful. That wasn't very careful, but it's fine. Who the hell is even following me? Oh, it's just some dude that's pissed at me. Oh, that's fine, who cares? I don't really know what you're expecting to accomplish here, but. <laughs> Oh, he's flipping me off. Oh, you, you you think that scares me, mate? You really think flipping me off scares me? How cute. Okay, I'm really struggling with backing this truck up. I'm not really that experienced in backing it up in real life, so maybe that's why. And now this police station is by far the most difficult to get out of just because these barriers here. So it's just gonna be very careful about driving around, but you should be fine. And that is a lot of cops on me. Holy shit, what the hell? I do not remember it being that intense. So what you want to do here is just drive a little bit away from the police station then get out of your truck. And you might be thinking, why why, why would you get out of your truck? Well, we're gonna also kill ourselves once again. I know, it seems a bit strange, but doing this will get the cops off you, so it's kind of worth it. And there we go, cops are off us, and we can head back to our truck and deliver it safely. Yeah, just be careful not to stand too close to your truck while you're doing that, because you might explode it and be very angry again, so. Just be cautious. And here we are with the delivery location. If the gates don't open for you, just ram into them because they apparently need a little push. And once that is delivered, we're gonna go ahead and abuse the teleportation system in GTA Online again and find a new session. 
Back to our Kazatka. All right, now onto the next mission, equipment. First of all, we're gonna need the safe code. If you get anything else apart from the bearer bonds, you'll be looking for a cutting torch instead, in which case you'll get different locations. And hopefully I'll be able to show that off in the uh, rest of the video. But for now, this is what we're doing. Now into the casino. Why, why do I always take my helmet off? It's just on the ground now. You've just wasted money on that helmet. Probably cost a good couple of bucks and you've just left it out to rot for people to steal off the street. Why do you do this? So now we're up at the top and I'm going to be honest, I always forget which way to go. I don't know if it's the same every time, but I always, always forget it. I'm hoping this is correct. Nope, of course it's not because I always go the wrong goddamn way. If someone in the comments can tell me how to know which way to go on this every single time, I'd really, really appreciate it because I somehow always get it wrong and it's really, really quite annoying. Is this correct? No. Where the hell am I supposed to go with it? All right, I think we go down this way and then... Yep, there they are. Okay, so you want to take out these guards silently, make sure you have a suppressed weapon, and then simply line them up real nice and kill. Perfect. Now when you go inside, no one will even know you're coming. And if I'm correct, there are three main areas where the guy can spawn. One is in this room over to the right. So you want to check that first, and there he is. And there are two other options over on the other side where he can be as well. So just, you know, have that in mind. So you want to steal his safe code, which apparently is in his knees. You know, very normal place for it to be. And then you can leave. Now you used to be able to blow yourself up here, but I don't think it works anymore. Let me just try just in case. But you used to be able to blow yourself up inside the building and it would take you outside. But yeah, they've patched it, which is kind of annoying. So instead you can have to just go back to the elevators. Then once you get outside, get back in your helicopter or press or a vehicle or whatever you're using and lose the cops. Whoa! Now once you're done with this first mission, you're gonna want to head over to the beach because that is the fastest area to go ahead and get start with, started with all the other missions. So you're gonna want to call in your Kasatka to come over here now and hopefully the cops will leave us alone very soon. It's taken quite a while today for some reason. Uh, I don't know why exactly, they're being quite titsy about it apparently. There we go. Now the unique thing about this mission compared to every other one is that the highest prep actually completes as soon as you lose the cops. So what you can do is go ahead and find a new session once you're over near the beach because then it will spawn you in a Kasatka near the beach. At least, well, it should have. Usually it does. I don't know why it didn't work that time. Never mind me. I'm just a bit of an idiot. But either way, even if you do spawn somewhere else, it's not going to waste you that much time. You can always fast travel with the Kasatka or just go over there in the first place. Now, where am I located? Over here. I can just deal with getting over there in the first place. So we're going to use the planning screen and once again, go over to setups, equipment and fingerprint cloner. And you know what? No, I am going to fast travel. It's just going to save me a couple of minutes, I reckon. So I always recommend fast traveling to Vespucci Beach. It's the first thing that shows up. I think it's the closest location to all the different areas you go to. So it's just the best for the heist. And once you're over here, get back in your moon pool vehicle and head over to the warehouse. Now, if you have an Impressor Mark II, I'd highly recommend using it just because it's much quicker for takeoff and landing. But the Sparrow is good enough as well or even the buzzard if that's all you have what you can also do is fly over to the first location straight away and then call your oppressor once you've landed that also works and he still won't talk to me lester what the hell man so what i'd usually do is use my motorcycle club to call my oppressor mark ii but i'm a ceo right now instead of a motorcycle president so for some reason it's just not letting me like i said though the sparrow is good enough so i'm just gonna have to use that for this mission i guess so you're gonna want to come in here take out the guards Sometimes this mission can be a bit difficult because they hide behind the side here. But as long as you're patient, you should be fine. Go ahead and hack the laptop. Pretty easy. Just press your button. X or A whenever the letters come into the blue bit in the middle. I don't know if I really need to be explaining this stuff to you, but who knows? There may be a new player watching. So if you are a new player watching, I hope you're enjoying the Chaos Citizens video. Back in the Sparrow and to the next location. Yeah, this is much easier when you're using an oppressor. Trying to land a helicopter under a bridge is not fun. And now you're going to want to take out the security cameras here. And head into the archive. And the fingerprint cloner is on this desk. It's on one of these desks here in this corner. So always just run over there. And now we deliver this back to the Kasatka and we're done with this setup. And another tip for those that just aren't aware of this, if you're using the Sparrow and fly above these little circles on the back of your Kasatka, you can click right on the D-pad to instantly be teleported inside. And speaking of making things quicker, I'm going to go ahead and leave my CEO and join my motorcycle club business so I can go ahead and call in my Oppressor Mark II. But before that, we got to start up another setup mission, which will be the blowtorch. Is that what it is? 
Yeah, cutting torch is what I mean. So what you can do when you have your oppressor is call it in and it will spawn right on the beachfront, which is much quicker than using this helicopter. Now, another tip that I only found out about like six months ago or so is that at every single construction site, there is a hard hat that you can put on so you don't alert the enemies. Or at least you shouldn't alert the enemies. You still can if you like kill one of them, but you should be fine. So for this one, it's located actually in the construction site and it will be right through here on the right. As you can see it right here, walk up to it and then you can click right on the D-pad to put it on. Sometimes it takes a while. If there's something else in the top left, for some reason, it doesn't let you do it straight away. But there we go. Hard hat on. Now you can walk around here pretty freely. Still don't try and piss off the guards, of course, because they will shoot you. But now you can go ahead and look around in all of these boxes trying to find the blowtorch. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Grab that boy and simply head back to your vehicle and deliver it to the Kasatka. It's as easy as that. And you can actually land your presser on the Kasatka. You just need to be very careful about making sure it doesn't fall into the water. So what I like to do is line up right in the middle of here. And it's usually going to be fine. Hopefully. Just don't fast travel while it's on there because it will get destroyed very, very quickly. And with that delivered, there's only one setup left. And our first salvage vehicle has been salvaged. Perfect. The Primo is done, which means the other one will be done in a second. But like I said, one more setup, the weapon loadout. Personally, I prefer the Conspirator the most, but the Aggressor is also just as fine. And we got 707 Vespucci. Perfect. Now, when you're doing the weapon delivery missions, you can get a location that is called Merryweather something. That has Merryweather in the title. If you get that one, you're going to want to change sessions and get one of the other ones because the Merryweather one takes genuinely like 15 to 20 minutes, whereas the rest of these can be like five minutes. So if you get the Merryweather one, just reset. It's not worth your time. Now, my suggestion is that if you have a helicopter, plane or an oppressor, always go to the roof entrance because you will not alert the guards inside and it means you can get in pretty easily. So you want to go here, quickly head into the roof and you can take out all the guards silently with a suppressed weapon, which makes this mission so much much easier. So first guard, walk up to the door, aim in on his head, shoot the door and then shoot him. Then there's a guard to the right, which you can headshot. Apparently he has no peripheral vision, so he won't see you. Shoot this guard here. Come through this area here, shoot the guard there. Now these guards, you want to line up for a, uh, a double quick takedown. Perfect. Now there's going to be three guys here. You can try and take them all down quickly. There we go. Not too bad. The alarm will go off, but now there's only one guy left, so it's not too much of an issue. And he's dead as well. Now come up to this wall. Click right on the D-pad, then you head over to this laptop here to do a bit of hacking. And this one's just about finding the numbers. We have 72, 23. Perfect. Open the gun locker. And for some reason, Rockstar made it so you don't just walk in and grab them. You have to walk in and press the D-pad again. So that's a bit annoying. But there we go. Now, you need to be very careful here because you sometimes get confused if you're not reading correctly. You can exit through the roof or the ground. You're going to want to exit through the roof, which is left on the D-pad. So there we go. And now there will be helicopters attacking you, but you should be able to get away very quickly and they won't pose much of a threat. If you do think they're going to kill you, just blow them up with an RPG or sniper and you'll be good to go. And back to the Kasatka for the final time before the heist. So I'm not sure how much time all those setups took me. Obviously, it was a little bit more because I kind of messed up a little bit here and there. But that part of the heist should take you maybe half an hour, 45 minutes at most, if you're being pretty efficient with it. But now we can get started with the actual heist, not the Humane Labs raid as Lester wants us to, but Kaya Perico. Simply head over to Finale, click Start, purchase your armor if you want to. You shouldn't be getting into any fights though, so you should be fine. And then go Approach Vehicle, Long Fin, Infiltration Point, you want to do the Main Dock, Compound Entry Point, Drainage Tunnel, Escape Point, doesn't matter. Time of Day, I prefer Day because you can see better. And Weapon Loadout, I put on Suppressors here because it's helpful to have Suppressors so they don't hear you. And then we can get started with the heist. Now, once again, I'm going to be showing you the method that I do the most. I'm sure there are other methods that are equally as good or possibly better, but this is pretty easy to do. So if you want to follow it, I would highly recommend it. Instantly, you're going to want to turn to the left here and head over to the airport. Now, you need to be careful here. You don't want to get your boat on the land because it can destroy it. So park somewhat close, but make sure to brake fully so it stays in place. Then you can simply just dive out into the water and make your way over to the shore. So first of all, you're going to want to run through here. If the tree doesn't block you, that is. Tree, tree, stop tree. Then you can take out this guard here run into this hangar and to get up top you need to use this forklift over here it's a little bit difficult to control but you get the hang of it after a few tries simply make your way over to this stack of crates get it in there and then lift it up get it to the top and then make your way over don't block the gate down below come over to the right side of it and then you can climb up now i like to use my gun to orient myself because sometimes turning is a bit difficult but then you can simply get in here pretty easily collect all your goodies which for me is just one little bit up here and then head downstairs as well 
137k from that. Not very good, to be honest with you. This is kind of not a great Kyra run in terms of money making, but it will still show you how to do it. Collect your cash, which is really, really bad for money, which is kind of ironic because it is just straight money, but it's still not very good. And then hopefully for most of you, your bag will be full by now if you've gotten lucky. But for me, because it isn't, I'm going to head over to the other area over here. Now I did get the painting as you would have seen, but getting a painting is not necessarily very common. So I'd highly recommend doing this method anyway. So you can take out that guard there, take out this security camera, just be careful that you don't alert any guards. And then if you come up on this hill here, you can take out the guard over there and take out the security camera that's going to be on this building to your left. Once you're done with all that, you can simply go in and you'll be completely fine. So like I said, you can come in here, take this money, but actually I'm going to go for the painting. Actually, hold up. No, I'm going to get a little bit of cash because I don't actually know how much the painting is and I don't want to risk it. So take a little bit of this cash and my bag won't even be full from this. Now I'm hoping that I can still fit the painting. If not, I've messed up a little bit, but we'll just risk it anyways. Ideally, you want your loot bag to be full by this point, but if not, oh well, you're just unlucky, I guess. So head back to your boat that is hopefully not broken. And if that does happen, you can just wait around here for other boats to come. You shoot out the driver and take it. So now you're going to be heading over to the drainage tunnel, which is on the south side of the island. And also make sure to put your rebreather on so you don't drown in the water. It's just left on the D-pad as well. And it will be on. It doesn't tell you it's on. You can see it on your face, though, if you look at your character. And it means you won't drown when you're underwater, which is, you know... A good thing, some would say. Swim over to this grate over here, the sewage tunnel, and cut, cut, cut that boy away. So swim through here and then up towards the grate on the roof and just spam right on the D-pad to get through. It may not look like you've gotten it, but your character will just swim for a while. For a while. Can't really pronounce the words right today. Um, hold up. The alarm's gone off. Or oh, it sounds like the alarm's gone off. What? Okay, the alarm was going off for a bit, I'm not sure what that's about, but you can run through here, run through this side, stay close to the left. As long as your footprints on the map don't go over the actual red circles of the guards, you'll be fine, so just be careful. But come up this way, and then around here you want to stop running, because you don't want to alert them. You can still jog a little bit here and there, but I prefer to walk, just to be safe. So just walk behind this guy, he won't see you, because he's a bit stupid to be honest. Then I'd recommend taking out your pistol, and if you really want to, you can go into sneak mode to make it even like more sure you're not going to you know, alert him, but you come over to this corner here. Now you can walk past him. I personally like to press right trigger to kill him. And he often drops this key, which means you can get out of the basement later on. And I got a painting earlier, so I can see if I can cut this out. I'm hoping I can. For fuck's sake, of course. Yeah, my bad. I should have gotten all the cash before. That is my mistake. Don't do me. Not in that way. Don't do what I did. Just make sure your loot bag is full. But then you come over to the fingerprint cloner, and this is very simple. I've explained it multiple times before, but it is basically a counting game. The top of the fingerprint is number one in the sequence, so the top bit. The second bit is number two in the sequence, so this is one, this is two, this is one, this is two, this is three, and it's just a counting game. One, two, three, four. That's all it is. It's very simple once you get the hang of it. It's literally just counting one through eight, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, counting one through eight, pretty darn simple. So one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. It's pretty darn simple. Okay, I should get a text message for the codes in a second. 45, 81, 81. That's a pretty easy one to remember. 45, 81, and 81. There we go. Now, if you did collect that key from earlier, you can go this way. If not, you have to go back up the top. So just another fingerprint scanner, and we head out to the right here, and with the key, we can open this gate. Now, you still need to be careful. You're not free just yet. There's going to be a guard there. I'd, I'd recommend him to wait for him to like move away from facing this direction. I think you technically can get up the stairs here. Actually, let me just try it. Oh, he moved away anyways. But yeah, jump over there, move up the stairs here. Now we're going to have to wait for this guard to move away. You can actually just kill him as well, but it's safer just to wait. And then we're pretty much good. You can just walk here if you want to play it safe. But there we go. Now we're out of the compound. So one last thing left to do. Kill the guy guarding this bike. Take the bike and ride your way to freedom, baby. So it's pretty easy from this point on. You come over here, jump up on this grassed area behind the helipad or the heli location, and you're basically just going to drive into the water. It may sound a bit stupid, but this is the easiest and fastest way to get off the island. So jump off here, put your rebreather back on so you don't drown, of course, and just swim under the water. Stay close to the ocean floor because sometimes Rubio and his helicopter still can shoot at you, 
but you're pretty much never going to die once you've gotten to this point. You just need to swim out and after a couple of minutes, you will finish the heist. Oh wow, a body has been found. What a tragedy. And there we go. Kaya Perico complete. Now, unfortunately, because of my stupid theory testing. I'm not going to get the elite challenge for this heist, but it's fine. I'm sure most of you guys will if you followed that properly and not how I actually did it. But there we go. I think that took just probably under an hour, maybe a little bit less. I didn't really time it myself. You guys can obviously see more in the video, but from that, we're going to get less than one mil. Holy shit, Kyo has been nerfed to oblivion. Of course, I didn't get the elite challenge because I didn't get my full loot bags. That would have helped, but that is really, really poor. My god. So realistically from that heist, I made about 900k because I also had the $100,000 setup price. That is really depressing. Like really, really depressing. It's so sad how far Kyle has fallen, but it's still one of the better methods in the game. So we got to do it, unfortunately. There we go. 992,000. Not the greatest. Really, really not the greatest, but it's still money in the bank. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a quick ammunition sale because I just did get the notification that I have weapon parts ready for delivery. So if you do want to go ahead and do a bunker sale mission or something else that's been waiting after this heist, go ahead and feel free to. I'm going to right now. And here we can go ahead and do our ammunition sale mission. Hopefully we get a good spot so it doesn't take too long. But as you've seen in videos before, I'm sure if you get a bad location, you can blow up the car and start again. 5.58 kilometers. You know what? It could be worse. I'm just going to do it. And there we go. A pretty easy delivery. Another $50,000. And now we are going to go ahead and see why I was at $0 at the start of the video. If you remember, I was at 2 million at the end of last episode. And I started this episode with nearly nothing. And that's because, like I said, I bought a Kasatka again. And how I've done that is through the means of another character. So you have two characters on your GTA account, if you were not aware, and you can make money on both of them because they share a bank account. So if you go into manage characters and make a second character like I have here, you can use him to do Kaya Perico back to back without a cooldown. Now, when you make a new character, you can also copy over your level. For some reason, he's only level 120 and not 137, but you can go ahead and log into this character and basically just do Kaya Perico again. Of course, like I said, you need to buy another Kasatka, so it is a bit more of an upfront investment, but it is definitely worth it in the long run. And this is the first time I've ever used this second character on Broke to Ballin, so I'm going to have to unfortunately go through all the cutscenes for Kaya Perigo, which means this is going to be a much longer heist than normal, which is a bit irritating, but it's the setup for the future that really matters. So as usual, go ahead and start up your heist. And if it is the first time ever doing it, it will be a little bit different. You're going to be going to the airport straight away. And like I said, you're going to be doing a whole lot of cutscenes. So just prepare mentally for that. <laughs> Now I'm going to go ahead and skip most of this view since you just saw it before, but just so you know, we got two paintings for loot, so we don't have to do any other secondary scouting. And obviously we got the original Madrazo files since this is the first time doing it on this account. And you can finally skip a cutscene. Uh, why is that the only cutscene in the whole entire Kaya Perico thing you can skip? Why? They should let you skip all of them at this point. It's been out for so many years. Now, like I said earlier, because we have two paintings, we can just go straight for the uh, facility. That's not what it's called. What's it called? The compound. That's the one. So no airport for us today. Straight over to the right. And we should be fine because as long as my research serves me correctly, paintings fill up 50% of the loot bag. And since I have two, that's obviously 100%. Some more basic math for you there. All right. The scariest part of the heist once again. Bonk. I don't know if I got the gate key that time. I wasn't paying attention. Oh well, we'll find out soon. But I think this is genuinely the second time ever I've had two paintings, which is quite nice. It just makes this whole entire process a lot quicker. Paintings aren't the most money that goes to our lovely white powder known as Coca-Cola, but they are pretty decent. And of course, if you have two of them in this room, it does save you a lot of time, which is always great when you're doing a time challenge. You know, what? if you think about it, technically life is a time challenge. How much do we get from two paintings? 323,000. Could be worse. Nearly 1.5 million. A lot, lot better than last time. And we didn't get the keys. God damn it. I didn't think so. Well, at least I can now show you how you get out without the gate key. And it's pretty simple, to be honest. You basically just go back the way you came. Now, you can actually jump here. And you know what? I'm going to because it's funny. So you can jump there. You can also go back the same way, come down these stairs. Both ways will get you over to here. And then you can leave the same way as usual. Once again, the final kill of the run. Goodbye, my good sir. Thank you for the bike. Really appreciate it.
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do Kaya Perico with no cooldown. Now, of course, when you complete these heists, there's still going to be a cooldown on your main account, and now there's going to be a cooldown on this account. But that's when you can go ahead and do other things that I will show you later in this video. We still have six and a half hours left, so trust me, there's still a lot of stuff to get through. And just to end it off as it started, another cutscene. Ah! A 7 minute 44 Kaya Perico. That is by far the quickest I've ever done it. Obviously got lucky with the paintings, but damn, that is really fast. And with that, we have 1.47 million and we should, I'm not completely positive because I don't know how it works on certain characters, but we should also get a first time bonus for doing it on this character which I think is like 100k, might be 500k, I don't really remember. An extra 200,000 and maybe some more along the way. I don't really know how much I had before and I don't want to do math, but we are currently sitting on 3,784,159 and we can finally go ahead and switch back to our main character. Okay boys, so now we are back on our main account and I've moved over to my salvage yard because now we're going to be repeating some of the money making methods I talked about earlier. I'm going to collect some cash from the safe first though, just because... I like a bit of a dopamine hit. Now, full disclaimer, between the last clip you saw when I did the Kaya Perico heist on my second character, and now it is the next day for me. Now, that does mean some things like the Kaya Perico cooldown and possible daily events such as the bike and RC time trials would have reset. However, I'm still going to be sticking to the challenge. It is still the exact same amount of time left as I had yesterday, and I'm not going to abuse the cooldowns like I could. So I'm still going to use the exact same method that I would be using if I was to do this in a 10 hour straight period. Just wanted to let you know, so if there's any confusion about why I have new time trials or something, that's why. So because of that, we're not going to be hopping into another Kaya Perico straight away. We're first going to be doing two more tow truck missions, since now we have two car slots available to go ahead and do that. And delivery number two. So now that that's done, I'm going to head over to my nightclub and make sure the popularity is still at 100%, which hopefully... It's close enough, because I really don't want to spend another 100,000 on a goddamn DJ. So a quick tip for those wanting to keep their nightclub popularity up, if you go to your interaction menu and enter passive mode, when you enter your nightclub, you're guaranteed to get a random event to kick out a person or kick out a person. I think those are the only events. And those will refill your nightclub popularity by, I want to say 20%, but to be honest, I'm not totally sure on the number. But there we go, Marcel, hey boss, we got a customer kicking up a fuss over his tab, causing a scene, and popularity is pretty high. So once we go, ahead and kick this guy out our popularity will be back at 100 lad get on out of my club please stop causing trouble for my lady perfect ten thousand dollars and nightclub popularity increased as well you love to see it boys we're being efficient today well, I say that, then I fail half the missions I do, but we're still being efficient. We're trying our best. The next thing on my list is once again getting my acid lab up and stocked and also checking to see if it's full or not. Now, I'm going to go over to the beach because last time I called it over there, I couldn't get in the acid lab, which is, you know, not great. So call it over here. It should spawn somewhere around me on the beach and we can go ahead and check it out. Now, like I said, because it is the next day from when I started recording, this might be full. Okay, it's not good. So because it's not full, we'll go ahead and speak to Mark, buy some more supplies, speed up the production, which I can only do once per day. Apparently it hasn't been a whole entire day yet. Sure, mate, that definitely makes sense. Whatever, we'll go do something else while we wait for that cooldown at least. And the next thing we can go ahead and start up if our bike lets us get on, thank you very much, is the Dr. Dre contract. Now, in this video, I did originally commentate over the entire Dr. Dre contract, similarly to how I did it with the Kai Perico heist earlier on, but it ended up being nearly an hour long, and I didn't want the video to be nearly two hours in total. So instead, I'm just going to show you this. Ah! No, I'm not sorry. Oh, and I also towed two more salvage yard cars in the middle of this as well, just to let you know. And with that, one million dollars. And just on time, our salvage yard cars have been salvaged once again. So guess what we're going to do, guys? We're going to we're gonna go, go, go do it again because, you know, efficiency. And our safe is also back at $48,000. So let me go collect that bad, bad safe. And once again, two more cars salvaged. And now I'm going to head back over to my nightclub again to make sure the popularity is back at full. So just like before, come off, uh, leave your motorcycle club president thingy into passive mode. And how much money do we have? 146,000. Not too bad. Get rid of my guy once again. He seems to have a, uh, a certain knack for annoying the females in our club. Just like most guys, we are a garbage species. Uh, popularity back at full. Fan 
bloody tastic. Well, there's one final thing I want to check before going ahead and doing another run of Kai Perico. In fact, another two runs probably. And that is the acid lab. Let's once again head over to the beach so I can actually get inside the vehicle and then see if we're ready to sell. And we're not ready to sell, but we might as well do it now. Gonna buy some more supplies, speed up production, and then just sell this because it's it's still not gonna let me. All right, that's fine. Apparently it's only once real life day now. I think it used to be once every 48 minutes, but they've seemingly changed it. But let's go ahead and sell the asset we have, 326,000. And do we get lucky on the sale mission? Ah, it's all right. And here we are, final acid delivery. Haven't been spotted by the cops yet, and I don't plan on being, so nice. 326k, and now it's time to bore myself to sleep by doing more Kaya Perico. That was legitness. And you know what? While I'm here, why not spin the wheel? I haven't done it in today's video yet, and I might as well test my luck. Come on, wheel. Give me something good. That is not something good. Why did I waste my time? And speaking about wasting time, here is how I spent the next three hours of my life. First of all, I went ahead and did another run of Kaya Perico. Unfortunately, it was kind of a shit run once again. We got Tequila, which is one of the worst primary targets you can get, and I only ended up making just over a million dollars, which when you factor in the $100,000 setup cost, we made less than a million. Again. After that, I tried to do Kai Perico on my second account again, but realized that the cooldown timer does not carry over on that second account when you're offline. I'm not really sure the actual mechanics and the way it works in the background, but basically I couldn't do it on that account. Unfortunately, before figuring that out, I spent 1.8 million buying a sparrow on that account. So the total money I made for this video is going to be less because of that, but hopefully it will come in handy in the future. So after I switched back to my main character, I did another tow truck mission and collected my money from the safe, as well as get my nightclub popularity back up and restock my acid lab. Typical things you've seen me do throughout this video. And then once the passive businesses were set up, we went into our second Dr. Dre contract of the video, and it went pretty smoothly. Bro, I can't get out of this fucking place. Holy shit. Why have they blocked me in again? I, I don't know what it is with this fucking southern leak, but all my teammates just seem to screw me over. I literally cannot leave. Let me leave. Why? Fuck off cars. Oh my God, I can't get out. Ah, finally. I'm gonna die, aren't I? I'm gonna fucking die. I'm gonna, ah! Oh my God, dude. It's the first mission of the contract. Literally the first mission I'm doing out of, I'm already failing. I can't, I'm losing. <laughs> I think the heat is really getting to my head. It's so hot in my room, you don't understand. I would put a fan on, but it ruins the mic quality. So I'm just suffering for you guys. And clearly it's making me lose a little. I really didn't think seven and a half hours of gameplay would make me go this far into insanity, but apparently it is. Holy fuck. Fuck, that was so unnecessarily difficult. Oh. oh, fuck off you wank stain. And it went pretty smoothly, except for literally the final mission, which should be the easiest thing to do and almost impossible to fail. But I am Lankman Dan, and this is what I do. So it seems I've actually managed to get myself stuck doing this mission, which is kind of funny because you know, early in the video, I said it's pretty much impossible to fail this. Now it is possible to fail this mission as I have shown in videos before, but you can only do it if you're genuinely an absolute goddamn idiot. So just drive like a normal person for once. I know it's difficult. I know you have urges, just hold them back for once, all right? Pretend it's November or something. Well, seems I've proved myself wrong. I fucking hate this game. And once again, in the middle of the contract, I did another tow truck mission because I just can't get enough of the toes. But once the Dr. Dre contract was finished for the second time, I got my million dollars and then spent the last hour trying to do as much stuff as I could to make as much money as I could before the timer ran out. And this is how it went. Now, what are we looking at? Nearly $250,000 in the safe, which is pretty much max cash, which is fantastic. Love to see it. First time I've seen a near max cash stack cash safe in this thing in probably like a year if I'm going to be completely honest. And now I'm going to head over to the actual nightclub itself uh, to see how much money we have to sell here. I don't think it will be a massive amount, maybe 200k if we're lucky, but I'm still going to go ahead and sell it anyways. Yeah, there we go. 169,000. Not the best, but we take what we can get. And we have five deliveries. Just fantastic. And there we go. Delivery done. Again, not too much money, but we got to fill up the time somehow. 52 minutes left. 
We have stuff to do. Again, commentary is hard, guys. That's right, we're back at the salvage yard. Gonna do a contract or a robbery, they're called. I keep forgetting that. Collect my safe money once again, another $48,000. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to complete this in time. But to be honest, I'm not totally sure. I think these take anywhere between 30 minutes and an hour depending on how quick you are, but I don't know how quick I am. So we're just going to have to try and do it as quickly as possible. That's what being quick means. I've said quick a lot in this past sentence. I'm sorry. Well, it seems that this is once again the mission row one, which I've done before, and I can't even get my presser mark two. So we're wasting time. So, so much of a good start already. I meant to say such a good start, but I kind of messed up my words. Apologies. All right. Weasel news building. Quickly go ahead and hack that signal box. This isn't suspicious, lady. Don't worry about it. Oh no. Oh no. Shit. <laughs> that is bad. Definitely not what I was trying to do. Once again, as I always say, second time's the charm. It's becoming a real, real saying on this channel. I don't know why. Now I just need to lose the cops. I don't think you can call Lester for these missions, but I might as well try. Oh, you can call him, but it won't let you remove your wanted level. So useless. And there we go. First mission done pretty quickly. I think the main thing is going to be whether it sends me up to Polito or not. If it sends me up to Polito for one of the missions, that's what's going to screw me over. Hopefully it doesn't happen. We're going to Pillbox Hill right now, which is pretty close. Oh, I remember this place. It's hell. Okay, is it going to be the last truck I check again like last time? Nope, it's the first truck. Cool. Oh my god, this... I don't know what it is about this ground in this place, but it is so difficult to turn on it, especially with big heavy vehicles like this little tow truck. It is truly abysmal. Rockstar need to fix it, but tactical gear delivered. Don't worry, I'm not complaining. Now, what is it? Three final setup missions and then the heist and then the sale mission? Wish you'd be able to do that within 37 minutes. Getaway vehicle, stun guns and weapon stash. Cool beans. Let's go. And that's the getaway vehicle delivered. And now the weapons. Stunny gunnies. Now we can do the ha uh, robbery. Robbery. And now this is probably the most difficult part of the whole mission, I can't lie. It's throwing tear gas into these. Shit, never mind, I have to do this first. Okay, too far away. There we go. Now I have to do this. Now you have to throw it through the top, but the angle is sometimes a little bit difficult. Like, see, that didn't work. That also didn't work. That also didn't work. It's very difficult to get it in the vent, I can't lie. It's kind of irritating. Honestly, spamming might be the best strategy. God, how far away do I have to be? Yo, go in! Oh my god. This is so stupid. Are you gonna go in? Oh my- See, this is why I hate this mission. This whole entire vent process is ass. Fuck off, man. This shouldn't be this tough. Thank you. At least someone wants to cooperate. All right, go in. Thank you. Is that in? Cool. Now I'm too close. There needs to be a better way to do this, surely. Like, throw it underhand or something, man. Under armor's gonna be much better for this, I can't lie. I think it's bouncing off. Okay, there we go. Christ, that took like three minutes or something? Probably not that long. I'm probably over-exaggerating, but it felt like ten hours. There's some keys. Head on over to the computer. L A W O R D. E R. I can spell. Get me those weapons, which aren't very good weapons, to be honest. They're kind of shit. At least from the last time I used them, I remember them being pretty bad. Tiny, just follow me. Just follow me, Tiny. The last time you refused to do so, so just make sure you're doing it. All right, get in, Tiny. Let's go. We're going to use the sewers again because me and the boys love the sewers. And we should be safe in here. The cops don't usually come down here. And by don't usually, I mean never, ever, ever come down here. So... Oh my god, the cop's coming down here. Oh my god, he's coming down here. Are you fucking kidding me? What? Oh my god, they never come down here. I'm so happy I looked. I literally checked at the last second because I was like, you know, just in case. Holy shit. Dude, since when? There you go, Tinkiny, as your new name is. Hope you have a fun time flying the heli. Now it's time for me to find a vehicle. Once he gives me the coordinates, of course. The ball is hideout. Alrighty. Let's get on my presser to make this a bit quicker because we are running low on time. I find it interesting that in this robbery, the final place of the car is different, but everything else is the exact same, pretty much. Bit strange, but oh well. I appreciate the variety, even if it's very strange and unnecessary. Well, there we go. There's my car, the Neo. I've never driven this one before. Looks quite nice. Let's get it back to the salvage yard. Damn, this thing is fast. Is it upgraded? 
Someone let me know in the comments, are the cars that you steal in these robberies upgraded or not, like in terms of speed and everything? Because this feels very quick, like HSW type quick, but if it's not upgraded, that's kind of crazy. Well, that should be it for this part of the mission. Cool. Now we just got to sell that thing off with 16 minutes left. The sale mission will be about five minutes and then we should still have time for our acid lab sale. So I've pretty much planned this out perfectly. I am a god. Sorry, that was unnecessary. Get that safe cash again. I also got a platinum award for perfect run. Actually, that's not platinum, is it? That's just regular. I got an award for perfect run. Okay, inspect the Neo. Sell that bad, bad boy. And now I'm just going to be careful not to wreck it. I would like to get as much money as possible. Although it is raining, which does make the traction a bit shit. And zero damages on the car. Just how I like it. Well, like I said, there's only one thing left for me to do today. And that is the acid lab sale mission. So let's go ahead and get to it, boys and lentilmans. And nearly a full product stock. Now, I know it's probably not the time to be trying stupid tricks to save time, considering I don't have much time left, but I'm going to go for it anyways. Take off, boys! Am I going to make it? The answer is no. Stash the acid in the truck. Oh no, there's cops. Oh, I, I didn't see that one coming. Oh, I'm so scared. Wow, you guys scare me. Wow, there's so many of you and you can't even hurt me. That is embarrassing. We. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's unbelievable how many cops there are up there and they somehow don't kill me. It's, it's, it's impressive to say the least. And delivery made. Now I have a few minutes left, so I might as well go ahead and do the BMX bike time trial, which is up here, I think it's starting point. Since I didn't do that in today's video yet, leave the best till last. And by the best, I mean, I'm probably going to fail it and then just get angry. So I hope you enjoy the end of the video at least. Ah, oh, junk energy time trial. My biggest enemy in this game. This is by far the time trial that's given me the most anger as well. I have gotten better at it since the first time I tried, but it's still pushes my buttons in a certain type of way. Fuck, it's, it's shit like that that pisses me off. I, uh, that doesn't seem to be like a, a very clear distinction on how close you have to be to the checkpoint. Sometimes it feels like you can be far away from it. Sometimes it feels like you can't. And in a situation like that, I felt like I was close enough personally. That's my goddamn opinion, but it didn't let me get it. So, uh, fuck the game. Fuck Rockstar, fuck. Uh, if I'm not able to complete this in the video, I'm going to be very annoyed. Yeah, give it to me that time, you slag. Okay, don't fail this jump, please. Good. And it's very easy to fall off if you hit one of these walls wrong, so just be careful. Can also fall off there. Good. We're doing all right. I should be able to make it, hopefully. And there's a car in the way. Did you have to park there? I know you're driving, not parking, but still. Come on. Go. Please. Oh my god, that's too close. My heart. Oh, my heart. Oh, we did it though. It's okay. And my arcade safe has a lot of money. You know what? I don't think I have ever taken money from my arcade, literally ever, but we're gonna go do it because that's an extra 77k for the video total. So I'm not gonna complain. Hello, video Geddon. I don't think I've been here in about six months. Probably my least used business. I can't lie. It is just not that great apart from the heist itself. But we do have a safe here that we can collect 77 sort of stuff. A number from. Look at that cash. Well, now that the clock is ticking down to zero and we have less than three minutes remaining, there's not really much time for us to do anything else except for stand here and admire the great leaps and bounds we have made today to becoming a rich person in the world of Los Santos. We currently have $7.3 million sitting in our bank account. However, if you take into the account the fact that I bought a sparrow on my other account, as well as the cassette kit itself, we would be sitting way above $10 million, which in my opinion, for 10 hours of gameplay, you know, put aside the mental stress is pretty good. So if you want to follow the method that I use today to make your own fortunes and riches in the world of GTA Online, I'd highly recommend it. Or if you're a rich mama's boy or sugar daddy girl and you have a lot of money to spare, just buy the shark cards. Don't waste your time like me. I definitely regret it.